Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, now we would like to go back to the mathematics of part of speech tagging after this discussion and um, you would recall that uh, we are making use of noisy channel metaphor the word sequence comes at the input of the channel and goes out having labeled by a sequence labeler in our case hidden markov model currently and that is the tag sequence we apply argmax because we want the highest probability uh, tag sequence given the word sequence okay and uh, you recall we applied uh, Bayes theorem on pt given w and uh, we divided the probability into prior and likelihood prior was treated with the chain rule of probability and markov independence assumption to get a product of transition probabilities and uh, the likelihood pw given t was again uh, treated by probability laws chain rule and the mark of independence assumption to get a product of uh, probability of word given the tag okay so this mathematics was uh, was done to you and all this is following very systematically the rules of probability and uh, once this mathematical treatment is done uh, this the, the the sentence tagging task is captured by a finite state automaton using probability and the name for that finite state auto automaton using probability is hidden markov model and we uh, started seeing the correspondence between um, between a hidden markov model and this part of speech tagging machine so you see we have placed here all possible tag sequences and created an automaton going from the start state hat to end state dot and from state to state we have transition these transitions are probabilities and these probabilities are obtained remember from the corpus corpus statistics and uh, the observation or lexical or emission probabilities which are word given the state they are also obtained from the corpus they are also corpus statistics okay so now we were required to understand what is the theory based on which we can create that automaton okay um, that automaton which is uh, composed of state transitions and emissions and with their probabilities so the basic mechanism is hidden markov model and uh, on the screen i have placed this very celebrated paper 1989 paper relevant even now you can imagine the uh, impact of this paper one of the most highly cited papers and uh, this was in 1989 by Rob Rabiner who was in uh, Jerusalem University and this tutorial on hidden Markov models has been read by generations of students researchers faculty members and so on so why did it stay so long why did it stay so long while many papers come and go many things come and go why did this paper stay so long okay i'm tempted to give this as an exercise to you but um, that is not really nlp it is more of philosophy and uh, more of uh, more of reflection on why thing, some things stay while others don't okay this paper stayed because it tackled foundational questions okay it tackled foundational issues which are required by every generation okay every generation so that is why this paper stayed and it uh, is an excellent discourse on hidden markov model now formalizing the hidden markov model is uh, this this particular tuple shown here okay and hidden markov model is defined by s v a b pi where s is the set of states v is the set of observations and uh, pi is the initial probability of uh, picking up a particular state from out of s okay so for the uh, for the rn example that we were discussing 
the states are U1, U2, and U3, corresponding to the three arms. And the observations are RGB, red, green, and blue, corresponding to the balls, which are pick, picked up and observed from the arm. Uh, an observation sequence is given the notation capital O, which is composed of O1 to ON as a sequence. Okay, uh, here I think the set notation is not right because O is a sequence. And the state sequence Q or S, which is Q1, Q2 up to QN, these also a sequence. And make this correction, they are not uh, sets, they are sequences. Okay, so, uh, so this is the formalization of hidden Markov model. So the uh, ARN situation gives the transition probability table U1, U2, U3 on the row, U1, U2, U3 on the column, and the observation probability table. And pi i is uh, Q1. Q1 is the first state, Q1 equal to UI, probability of Q1 be being UI. So Q1 can take the two values of U1, U2, U3, and for each of them, there will be probability pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Okay. So uh, the whole hidden Markov model has three probabilities, the transition probability, observation probability, and the initial probability. And uh, we said that we can uh, convert the situation to a finite state automaton with probabilities. So from U1 to U2, I have the transition probability of 0.4. I pick it up from the table. And I can also uh, give the observation probabilities of R, G, and B with 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.2, which come from the emission probability table. Okay, so from this table, uh, given this transition probability table and observation probability table, I can always create this kind of finite state automation, automaton, which is probability, with probability. And this is nothing but the hidden Markov model of uh, order two. Okay, these are bigram hidden Markov model. Now we also remark that we can take product of the observation probability and the transition probability and uh, simplify uh, the drawing of the diagram. Okay, uh, now uh, we come to a bit of theory as to why we are uh, allowed to uh, allowed to do the computation the way we are doing. How, why can we take products? Okay. So now uh, here is a situation we have O1, O2 up to O8, eight observations. And they are R, R, G, G, B, R, G, R, the sequence that was shown on the screen. And the states are S1, S2 up to S8, okay? So do not uh, uh, think about Q1, Q2, Q3, etc. I am working with S1, S2, S up to S8 corresponding to state. Okay, so it can be Q, T, S, any notation, but here I'm using S. Now, S star is the best possible state sequence, the ARN sequence. So our goal is to maximize P, S star, not, no, not S star, P, S given O, and the argmax will return me the best possible state sequence, which is S star. So, uh, S star equal to argmax over all possible S, P S given O. Okay, this is the formulation. Now we can take a false step at this stage. We can take a false step. What is a false step? We can take P S given O and directly uh, decompose this by chain rule with the probability of S from 1 to 8 given observation from 1 to 8 and then apply chain rule and independence assumption saying that each state depends only on the observation at that position and therefore uh, convert it into uh, convert it into p s1 given o1 p s2 given o2 and so on okay so if we do so then we are uh, dealing with probability values which are p s i given o i now remember no such probability is given to us okay no such probability is given to us in our uh, uh, in our formulation of the HMM. We are given only transition probability and observation probability. And the observation probability is, uh, is given in an opposite manner. Probability of observation given state, okay, not the other way around. So uh, this is a false start because though theoretically all right and maybe interesting also, but we do not have the machinery or the raw material 
to deal with this kind of formulation. Therefore, what we do is that uh, what we do is that we apply Bayes theorem and uh, convert P S given O to P S into P O given S, just like we did for uh, tag sequence given the word sequence and the argmax is over S. So once we do do this. Once we do this, we have PS as probability of S1 to 8, and that can be broken up by chain rule into PS1 into PS2 given S1, PS3 given S1 and S2, and so on. And we make uh, again Markov assumption K equal to 1. That is, the state depends only on the previous state, then PS becomes PS1 into PS2 given S1, PS3 given S2. And now we are fine. Now we are fine because P S2 given S1 is nothing but the transition probability, which is given to me in the definition of that hidden Markov model. Okay, it is, I have these probabilities. And uh, the other probability, probability of observation given the state sequence, this again uh, is treated by chain rule of probability and Markov assumption. And I'm able to get the expression P O1 given S1 into P O2 given S2, into P03 given S3, that is given probability of the observation given the state. This also is fine because I am given the emission probability or the observation probability table. So I have I have all the wherewithal for dealing with the computation now. Okay, and I have cast the problem into product of transition probabilities and observation probabilities. Okay, so uh, P S given O is uh, now converted into this form you see uh, 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 sorry into p s into p o given s remember that the denominator is not playing any role because we take argmax and the denominator is a con constant with respect to um, with respect to the the argmax argument okay so we want the best possible state so so then, uh, uh, so so after after this uh, uh, treatment, P S into P O given given S, I can group these terms pairwise. So P O zero given S zero into P S one given S zero, P O one given S one into P S two given S one, P O two given S two into P S three given S two. Notice what is going on. What is going on is that uh, for given a state, I am interested in the observation at the state. And I'm also interested in the next state. OK, so that's why P01 given S1 into P S2 given S1. So uh, this uh, product, this pair of products uh, of probability values is giving me a combination of observing O1 and going to the next state S2. OK, so this is very elegant. And this is why we can combine the observation probability with transition probability. Combine means we can take the product, okay? And we can merge these two arcs coming out of a state into one arc, okay? Which is the product of these two probabilities, the observation probability and the state transition probability. And once we do so, the, uh, the finite state automation, automaton with probability becomes little more simple okay and uh, this is a very important uh, uh, point about hidden markov model and the whole thing is very elegantly expressed as p s k arrow s k plus one with ok sitting on top of the arrow okay so uh, language wise OK, if you want to give it a linguistic expression, you say that this is the probability of going into next state, observing a symbol or going into next state, emitting a symbol. You either observe a symbol or emit a symbol uh, that comes from finite state automaton theory and it gives you what is called Moore machine or Mealy machine, depending on whether you are observing a symbol or emitting a symbol, Moore machine or Mealy machine. Okay, so SK arrow SK plus one given OK is a very uh, elegant symbol probability of that and that symbol doesn't have any 
formal status in probability. It doesn't have any formal status because probability doesn't um, admit the notation arrow. So this uh, notation actually is equal to P O K given S K into P S K plus given S K. OK, so this is a shorthand for the product of P O K given S K and P S K plus one given S K. OK, so I suppose this matter is uh, very clear to you. We are on a very uh, firm theoretical footing now because we are allowed to take the product of observation probability and transition probability. And now the whole uh, automaton becomes nothing but a uh, chain. And this uh, there is a special name for this. It is a Markov chain. It is a Markov chain. OK, you have a straight line going from S0 to S9, where S9 is the final state and S0 is also the initial state. This is the hat symbol and this is the uh, um, dot symbol. The sequence beginner and sequence finisher. In between, we have these eight states. OK, so uh, we'll uh, continue uh, this discussion. We'll uh, keep looking uh, deeply into the functioning of the hidden Markov model, which will help us cement our understanding on uh, sequence labeling and decoding. OK, so now I would like to. Look at the questions that you might have. Uh, Mohit, I guess HMM should be defined as a tuple, not set. OK, yes, you're right. Uh, should be a tuple. That's correct. How do we decide? This is uh, how do we decide an inherent role to a word if it is changing on context? How is it decided? Oh, the uh, good question. The inherent role is not very well defined here. We are talking about part of speech tag. OK, and the part of speech tag can only have the dictionary property or the all property in the context property. So the preference is always given to the dictionary property, the part of speech tag as recorded in the dictionary. And remember, we are not uh, at all referring to any kind of meaning situation. It is a purely syntactic grammatical phenomenon. What is the okay. meaning of semantically vacuous text unit? Ah, OK, uh, so uh, English has these two peculiar words uh, situations there and it it is raining. So what is raining that it doesn't refer to anything. There was a king. Where was the king? So that there also doesn't have any role. So they are called syntactic subjects and they are semantically vacuous. OK, this especially these two things and other languages don't have this phenomenon. The second question is hmm. it in it is raining is also tagged. EX question mark. Does it uh, get the tag EX existential? Uh, no, I think uh, existential existential tag only goes for there, not for it. The next question is Vineet asks for same language but spoken in different regions. Example Indian English or African English. Mm -hmm. There will be a slightly different grammar or LM. Would mm -hmm. it be more appropriate to use the pen tag set or the BIS tag set bracket in case of Indian in such a case? For Indian languages, you should use BIS tag set. OK, because uh, things like two in they are not appropriate for Indian languages. First of all, Indian languages don't have prepositions. They have post positions. So we have uh, taken particular care for uh, designing the post position tags. The tags uh, which come for words uh, or post positions. To give you an example, eight with a spoon. Eight with a spoon. With comes before spoon. But in Indian languages, chamach se khaya. There is an inversion, and with spoon has become chamach se. So se is coming after the noun, whereas with was coming before the noun. That's why English has preposition. Pre means before. Indian language, uh, languages have post position, post means after. So for Indian languages, you have to use uh, BIS post tag set. Okay. Next. Uh, Kaveri asks dollar is separate tag in pen tag set. So hmm. for $50 here, for dollar, should we use the dollar tag or the SYM symbol tag? Yeah. yeah. Good question. So the. Uh, Post tag set is same as the lexical element only for punctuations. Okay, comma, dot, exclamation, etc., etc. But for dollar, uh, you have to use sim symbol. 
okay because it is not really punctuation mark parth asks in the last slides there were a few things which were not covered would they be covered later or are for self reading uh no 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 uh, they will be covered uh quickly maybe but i will also have to leave quite a few things for self reading yeah. saurav asks why is question mark given the full stop tag shouldn't it be question mark itself yes so this may be a mistake okay yeah. and maloth also has a similar doubt two should be the two tag right in this yes. example mm, yes yeah this may be a mistake no coming to the previous question if uh, dot is a sentence finisher tag okay uniformly then maybe the annotators were told to give this dot tag for question because question is finishing that sentence so here is where the inter annotator agreement comes okay annotation is not really completely controlled task we have a team of annotators and annotators decide to tag many times as per their understanding and therefore there is often happens what is called inter annotator difference or agreement right. Vatsal asks why some words and tags are put in square brackets. Hmm. Okay, that square bracket actually is uh, at the parsing stage. For now, please ignore it. Uh, that uh, square bracket is combining multiple entities together. Okay, so this square bracket is either for short phrase or a full parse. So square brackets will meet uh, later. so much so that uh, we have a special uh, term for this it's called bracketed structure okay we'll meet brackets later uh, uh, then saurav asks where said ram what hmm. tag will be given to question mark here here it will get question mark itself okay so uh, mohit says that i guess hmm should be defined as a tuple and not a set correct this answer it should be tuple right those things 